So, you've just picked up your very first 3D printer, or maybe you're thinking about getting into the hobby. But now you're wondering, what can I actually print? In this video, I'll walk you through where to find endless free 3D models, what file types like STL and 3MF actually mean, a brief overview of what a slicer does, and if you're curious about it down the line, I'll also cover the things you need to know if you ever want to start selling the things you find. So let's get into it. What is a slicer? A slicer is a program that takes your 3D model and turns it into instructions your printer can understand. It slices the model into hundreds of thin layers, like slicing a loaf of bread and then tells your printer how to build each layer step by step. The slicer also lets you adjust settings like print speed, temperature, and how strong the print will be, making it an essential tool for turning digital designs into real objects. Now there are a bunch of slicers out there and many printer manufacturers even have their own. But if you're just getting started, I would highly recommend Orca Slicer. It's powerful, user-friendly, and it supports most modern printers. This video isn't really going to deep dive into how to use a slicer, but once you're familiar with yours, the info and settings you find on these 3D model pages that we're about to go through will make way more sense. So where do we start? The first place you should check is a website called Yegi. Think of it like the Google of 3D models. It pulls results from all the major 3D model websites like Thingiverse, Printables, MakerWorld, and puts them all into one place. You will need to create an account on each website before you'll be able to download anything from them. So I would recommend going through all of these websites, creating an account, and keeping yourself signed into them all so you can just freely download whatever you like. A great feature about Yegi is that it actually has a filter that only shows free models. So once you've had a look through the search results and you've found one you like, open it up. On a typical model listing, you'll find the title, creator name, preview images, and download links. These will usually be in STL or 3MF formats. We'll get into those in a bit. The description often includes print tips, recommended settings, and assembly instructions. You'll also see licensing information, which is important if you want to remix or sell the model, and community feedback in the form of comments or makes. Some sites even let you view the model in a 3D viewer, which can be super handy, especially when you're skimming through a bunch of models and want to check the shape or orientation without downloading anything. You'll also usually find a remix tab that displays versions of the 3D model that other users have modified or built upon. It's a space where creators can showcase how they have adapted the original design, whether by changing dimensions, combining it with other models, or improving functionality. Each remix links back to the original design, making it easy to track the design's evolution and find variations that better suit your needs. This information is often the difference between a successful print and a total spaghetti mess. So always take a few minutes to look through everything before hitting download. Now, if you don't have a printer yet, or you want to print something that's really complicated or super high quality, a company like PCBWay, today's sponsor, can help you out with this. So once you've downloaded one of your 3D models you found on Yegi, all you have to do is upload it onto their instant quoting system, and you can get it printed in resin, metal, nylon, and a bunch of other materials, and even a bunch of different colors. I actually had them print some custom door hinges for one of my 3D printers recently, and they came out looking really, really nice. So it's a great option for beginners who aren't really ready to commit to a printer yet, or for people who want pro quality results without the hassle. Check the description for a $5 discount off your first order. It's super common that once you start printing cool stuff, you'll think, hey, maybe I could sell this. And yeah, it's totally possible, but you've just got to check the licenses first. Let's say you find something like this stupid cat feeder and you want to sell it on Etsy. You'll need to scroll down to the license section, and this is located on different parts of the page depending on what website you're on. If it says Creative Commons Attribution, that means, yes, you can sell it as long as you credit the original designer and link back to the source. Now check out this other one. See that little dollar sign with a cross through it? That means non-commercial. You can't sell this. This is for personal use only. But just because it says it isn't commercially available, it doesn't always mean you can't actually sell it. On this design, you can see it has the crossed out dollar sign. However, this maker has linked to their Patreon page where they offer a commercial license. So although the license type states that you can't sell it, it's always a good idea to check the description to see if there's an option to buy a license. Now there are a wide variety of combinations of these license types, but most websites will link to a page that clearly explains what the license allows you to do and what it doesn't. And honestly, it's not worth trying to sneak around this. 
The 3D printing community is tight knit and if someone finds out you're selling their work without permission, you could get an angry email, a strike against your name on your Etsy store, or even threatened with legal action. So yeah, respect the license and only sell what you're allowed to sell. And if you're curious about what kind of 3D printed stuff actually does sell well on Etsy or Amazon or eBay, I've already made an in-depth video that explains all of this. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Now let's talk about the file types you'll be using. STL versus 3MF. What's the difference? So STL stands for stereolithography and it's the most common file type in 3D printing. It's basically the JPEG of 3D models and it's been around forever. And almost every slicer supports it. But it's also kind of basic. STL files only store the shape of your model, not color or print settings or any metadata. On the other hand, 3MF stands for 3D Manufacturing Format. It's like the next gen version of STL. It can store extra info like importing multiple parts so you can move around individually, model orientation and print settings, custom supports, and even materials and colors. This makes it way more convenient for more complex prints or multi-part assemblies. Some websites like Thingiverse allow you to download both file types, but this generally depends on who made the 3D model and if they uploaded the different versions. And if you're using a modern slicer like Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio, they support both with no issues. One thing to remember with 3MF files is that when you import them into your slicer, it will also import the printer that the author was using along with the build volume, build plate and other things. And most of the time, the printer they were using is not the same as yours. Now, usually your slicer will tell you this and recommend swapping back to your own printer, but depending on what slicer you're using, or if you have a tendency to click past pop-ups without actually reading them, it can land you into some pretty major issues, such as printing way hotter than your printer can handle, or even forcing your printhead off the build plate and destroying the motors, because the 3MF file has made your printer think it's much larger than it actually is. So I would only really use 3MF files when you really need to. Otherwise, just stick with STLs. Importing them is really easy. You can do it two ways, either downloading the file, then dragging and dropping it into your slicer, or depending on the website, you can open it directly into your slicer with the click of a button. Sometimes a model just won't slice as it's become damaged somehow during the 3D modeling process. Most slicers, like Orca Slicer, can auto repair minor issues. If it says mesh repaired, you're probably fine. But if problems keep happening, I've made a video showing how to fix STLs using free tools like Mesh Mixer, Blender, or Formware STL Fixer. So check that out if you need help. Another issue, too much detail. Game models or 3D scans can often have hundreds of thousands of vertices and your slicer might lag or crash when trying to slice it. If you get your 3D model from a website like TurboSquid, then you may run into issues like these, as websites like this are more for 3D models in games and animation rather than 3D printing and are often not optimized for a slicer. So if you do end up downloading a 3D model from a website like this, you can always just load it into your slicer and look for a simplify or reduce polygons option. Just be mindful that these designs will probably take a little bit of extra tweaking in the slicer to get it to print properly. If you are ever unsure about whether or not the 3D models you're downloading are optimized for 3D printing, just have a look around on the website for designs specifically made for a 3D printer. Otherwise, a quick Google search will keep you on track. Some final tips. Bookmark the sites you like and start building your own model collection. Create folders like to print, tested, and needs fixing. <laughs> You'll thank me later. Check websites like Printables and Thingiverse regularly, as people are always uploading really cool stuff every single day. And most importantly, have fun. Don't stress about monetizing your printer straight away. Just enjoy the process of printing weird, useful, or ridiculous things. If you have any questions or run into issues, I've recently made a Discord server full of friendly, experienced people who are happy to help. It's currently free to join, but will eventually become a paid community, so get in while it's still open. Everyone who joins early gets to stay in for free, forever. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Happy printing!